Welcome back to part two of my four part fast load series on four portable retro handheld gaming consoles, all under $60 that I purchased during Amazon Prime Day 2021. In the last episode, I looked at the Great Boy with 380 games and compared it to our baseline device, the Retro Flag G Pi case. In this episode, I take a look at the Link 4 handheld with 500 games. Like the last video, I'll open the box, tear it down, highlight features, and then share demos of worthy retro game titles. Let's grab our blue box here. And as we see on the front, there's nothing to let us know that this is a Link 4 model. We just have to guess, I guess. Well, here's a little information on the side. We do have some information about the game itself. Three inch super wide LCD display. I'm not sure how super wide that looks, but we'll take a look. Rechargeable batteries, the console supports two with a extra joystick. That sounds good. Here's some warnings. We'll pass those on. And here's what the device looks like. Traditional Game Boy handheld format, which as you know from the first video, I am not a fan of, but we'll still play with it and give it a shot. This is a comparison to the Fate Fan, which we'll look at in the next video. Here is the Link 4 with the extra joystick. Let's go ahead and take a look at that extra joystick here. But before we do, let's pull out the battery and see what kind of battery we have. It's very similar to the one we had in our Great Boy from the previous video, as you can see here. Should be interchangeable. Should be able to swap those out. Nice little feature that they all use the same batteries, at least the two we've looked at so far. I suspect the third one will as well. Here's our extra controller. We'll take a look at that towards the end of the video and see how that works. Uh, it's got this gold foil. It looks kind of cheap, but yeah, it is what it is. It was not that much money. And we have our video out cable, which I'll be using to capture some video later on at the end of the video. And of course, a USB not to connect to it, but to power it. And we have our product manual in both Chinese and English, as you can see here. All the information we need to get started with our Link 4 Retro Gaming Console, which is right here. And just a quick comparison to the Fate Fan, which we'll look at in the next video. You can see they're very similar in layout and makeup, except for the weird controller on the Fate Fan, which we'll talk about next time. But everything seems to be laid out in almost the same location. Have to wonder if it's the same board inside. Well, when we tear it down, I guess we'll find out if it's the same board. Look at that, even the placement of the volume control. About the same thickness, same weight, same height, about the same everything. I'd be surprised if they are different for sure. Now with the battery in, we'll go ahead and turn it back on or turn it on for the first time rather. And let's see, we go to English, definitely there. And there's a list of 501 games. Now, having gone through this, I will tell you that some of the games are incorrect. There were several games like Paperboy that I selected that was not Paperboy. We'll take a complete look at the complete list of 500 games at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and play a game of Star Force just to see what the screen looks like. The screen's pretty bright. It's not as good as the Great Boy. Uh, and again, here's that format. Again, this hurts my hands, but Everything seems pretty responsive, although I have to say the controls are very smushy. I feel like I'm not getting a good con, well, there I died because I didn't feel like it was a good contact. So let's disassemble the Link 4 and see what we have inside this little red handheld beauty. And the first step is to remove the battery as we did with the Great Boy. Next we'll grab our screwdriver and get all these tiny little screws out of here. Well, there's not a whole lot to look at when we take the back off. We can see the speaker. We can see our volume control. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, well, oh, we got one more screw. Let's go ahead and get rid of that screw. And then on the inside, we'll flip it over and see what we have on our circuit board, being very careful not to damage anything. Again, we have that ribbon cable on that screen. I want to be very careful with that. Looks like the controls for both the buttons and the joystick use the same contact pad. And with this rubber in there, that kind of explains why it feels a little smushy. Got a good reset switch there, just a standard momentary switch. And I'm gonna be very careful as I remove the screen and we take a look at the processor. All the information on this processor will be in the companion blog post, just as it was for the great boy in our first video. Taking a look at some more supporting electronics around. We have our on off switch. We have our USB. We have a headphone jack that also doubles as our audio visual out so that I can record this using a screen capture device. Now, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get this thing put back together 
Make sure we have all of our control button covers in place before we start that. And let's go ahead and reassemble. Nice, everything went back together. Time to put in a battery and give it a try. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up. I was pretty successful on the first one, the great boy breakdown and tear down. So let's see what happens. Yes, we have 500 games in the palm of our hand to try. Let's load a game here of Stargate to make sure everything's working properly. Just to make sure when I disassembled and assembled the device, everything is put back in order and everything feels just like it did before and including these mushy controls. I'm not sure I'm going to like these controls. Let's play this a little bit longer. I hate to keep beating on the expired equine. That's dead horse, but it does seem like this form factor is, again, not my favorite. Uh, these controls are a little mushy. Hey, if you want my full review of this device, be sure and check out the companion blog post. I have a lot more information, including why this may or may not be the device for you. And we see that one controller works. Why don't we go ahead and grab that other controller, plug it in, and I'm going to try and demonstrate using this device with two joysticks with a single hand. Here we go. So I've got a phone in one hand trying to record this, but you can see the second controller is connected. It does connect into the USB port, the same USB port that you use to charge the lithium battery. So you will not recharge and use this joystick at the same time. That concludes part two and this look at the Link 4 Retro Handheld Gaming Console. Be sure to check out the companion blog post for much more information. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting the subscribe button and taking care of all that business down below. I'd love to read your comments and your feedback. If you have a retro gaming handheld you'd like me to look at in a future video, hey, send me an email to retrocombs at iCloud.com. And that concludes this video. Let's take a look at some game demonstrations. Retro Combs out. Thank <laughs> you.